I'm so excited to bring to you the Academy i3 podcast. This is a series of podcasts where we lead with open hearts and open minds to inspire, inquire, and impact the workforce. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. This is brought to you, of course, by the Academy of Professional Excellence. For this episode, we'll be focusing on the topic of father engagement. And we have our guest, Juan Solis, here. Juan, if I can have you introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Juan Solis. As Mr. Charlie just mentioned, I am the father engagement coordinator here at Children's Network. I also chair the Alien Empire Father Involvement Coalition. I've been at work uh, in regards to fatherhood, I would say, for the last decade, a little bit over a decade or so. Um, truly enjoy this work. It's it's hard work, right? We always tell people it's hard work, not hard work. Uh, really trying to engage our fathers um, in our communities and, and strengthening them, empowering them, and equipping them as best as we can. Um, and we're going to get a little more into that later. So thank awesome. you for having me. Of course, of course. Yeah, thank you for, for being on. And I mean, within your role, um, you know, can you share a little bit about maybe how long you've been in your role for and maybe the, some of the impacts you, you've seen within your role? Yeah, so my specific role here as the Father Engagement Coordinator um, and Chair, I uh, have been here since 2018, so roughly a, a little bit over three years. Um, prior to this, I was at Children and Family Services, you know, working one-on-one -on -one with my, my dads um, as a mentor, parent, partner. And, uh, you know, I was able to see right off the bat, you know, some of the barriers, personal barriers that, um, as a former system involved father as well, you know, I, I, some of the personal barriers that we um, put before us, right, our, our criminal activities, our, our um, you know, criminal backgrounds and um, addiction and so on and so on, but also seeing some of the organizational barriers. Um, and, and that's one of the things that we like to focus on is how, how can we eliminate as many barriers as possible, but starting with our organizational barriers where, you know, we have male staff, little details, little small specifics, where we have male staff where fathers can seem a little more um, comfortable because it is intimidating walking to county offices or even community um, partner agencies, right? Where, you know, it's women dominated. You see women um, everywhere. Not that it's a bad thing. I mean, I'm a, I was raised by a single mom, so it's not, nothing bashing on women. Um, you know, I have three daughters and, and, um, and three boys. And so I always, I always want to make sure that we empower our women, obviously. Um, and it's great. But at the same time, when we look at, you know, comfort and when we look at friendly environments, we look at at that as well, you know, can we have even volunteers, um, you know, can we look at intentionally bringing in male, male staff um, and eliminating some of those very um, organizational barriers as well as the times of the, of the services, you know, is, is it around working hours where our dads are at work, even though now we're starting, we're, well, obviously we've seen a lot of more um, stay at home dads than ever before, but there's still those times where, um, you know, fathers that are in the middle of services or just in the middle of of reunification or just in general, you know, they're, they're working. And can we put these services and, cl and classes that we're offering um, after hours? So it's accommodating to these dads. And so um, again, now those are just small, some of the many, many things that um, I work on, but this work is really, it's really impactful. It, it goes beyond it goes beyond us, right? It's, it's, a, it's a bigger picture. And, and before I used to, look at it as far as okay I want to be able to share my testimony you know because I came out of it you know I, I was able to get clean and I was able to reunify with my children and you know I want to share my testimony that it is change is possible that's the number one message that I walk with but then I saw it's be it's it's more than that right because my story isn't everybody's story um what worked for me is not going to work for everybody else right so I'm talking about my first uh my first year in in uh human services and social services and I'm like, you know what? It's bigger than just, just, than just this. We really need to be able to not just connect dads because we saw that. I saw that. But we were looking to equip, engage, and encourage our fathers. Hey, get involved with your kids. But a lot of the feedback I was getting was exactly that, that, you know, well, I want to get engaged with my kids. I want to be involved with my kids. But when I go um, look for services or support, there's nothing specifically for me. Right. Or when I go and lock, knock on, on mom's door so I can visit my kids, I get the same door slammed in the face and I get a no. Right. And so what, what do we do with that? And so I think now a lot of our effort is not just engaging dads, educating dads, it's really even educating our professionals as far as what father engagement looks like and working with our maternal, our maternal health, um, health care providers. Right. 
to understand that how can we educate moms to know that it's important for fathers to be involved with their children early on, right? Because of the healthy outcomes. Absolutely. I mean, I think you definitely speak on a couple of different things there, especially with you're not only engaging um, just the fathers or just the mothers, you're engaging both of them together. And the impact of that really is, is big for, for kids, as we know. Um, but also just the fact that like, you know, it, it's the environment that we <clears throat> bring to them that allows them to feel like they can come in and, and seek support with us. And so, you know, I think you're, you're kind of leading into it, but I think I'd love to hear more about, you know, why you feel father engagement is so important. Well, I think father engagement is so important because there's so many different complicating factors that arise from it. I mean, statistics and research shows that when a father is involved, and then we'll start with schools first, right? Children do not just don't they don't just do better in school. They're highly highly likely to graduate and more likely to attend a college. Um, and then it go, even goes with behavior. There, when a father is involved in a child's education, when we specifically talk about boys um, and sons, they're less likely to go to the principal's office. They're less likely to have behavioral problems. Um, and then when we talk about young girls. When a father's involved in a child's education, they're less likely to have anxiety. They're less likely to, um, you know, have any emotional um, complications, and and they're more likely to um, have higher grades. And overall, students, right? And we could easily say, "Hey, kids do better when kids when dads are involved." But the research is specific. It's really specific. It says students are more likely to get straight A's when a father is involved in the education, right? And so we tell dads, it's not just dropping them off, not just picking them up and, and having conversations, great. You know, hey, how's school go? Okay, good. But it's really even, you know, doing some research. Cause I know for me, I, research for me in school was difficult cause nobody was showing me how to, you know get this uh, project done, right? I had, I honestly, I grew up with no father. Um, mom was an addiction, right? And so when there was any projects going on, like I had to figure out myself. I did a lot of copying. I would watch my, my peers. Uh, and I'm like, man, that came out good. But then I look at my project, it wasn't so great, right? I remember in fifth grade specifically, I had a, a project about, uh, I, it was a history project and I had to pick somebody. I know all about Henry Ford. Until this day, I remember Henry Ford because that was my project. And I got a B plus. And even my fifth grade teacher was like, wow, I don't know how you did it, but it, it, this project came out good. But um, I think for me, it was like, I really, I, I put, that was my, the first time in school where I really put my whole heart into getting this, I'm gonna do this. Forget mom, forget dad. Like that was my train of thought. Forget mom, forget dad, forget everybody. If it's me, I'm gonna do it, right? Um, but it just shows that uh, when we when we have, a father involved and we're able to, you know, encourage dad and even show them, hey, this is what you can do, right? You can, um, I know homework, especially right now, like there's so many things that have changed, right? And you could look up on, on some videos or hear some links to help you understand how to help your child with their homework. Um, and just being involved. I mean, I know one of my my worst, worst memories as well. And I always like to keep it keep it related to my to my personal um, situation because it relates to a lot of people out there, a lot of children out there. Um, but I remember um, moving from fifth grade to um, junior high because um, it was still called junior high back then, and there was nobody there. Nobody from my family was in the stands. Nobody was there, like applauding for me when I grabbed my 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 award and all that. And and it and it hurt. It hurt to see everybody else, you know, taking pictures with their fam. And, and that was one of the memories. And so me growing up now with my children, right? And I started having children. I said, you know what? I am always going to be there no matter what. And so I tell my job every time, no matter where I've been, you know, I'm really involved in my child's school, my child's doctor's appointments and so on. And, um, you know, I've always been there. First days of school, whenever they have something going on in their school. And you see my, my kids just, you can see them when, as soon as they see their parents in, in, in there, they have this like sense of pride, right? Like, yeah, my dad's here. And, and that's what our children really need. They thrive off that. I mean, we even, I even hear it to this day, uh, whether it be at church or at schools, PE teacher, usually, right? Usually male. Um, one of the, one of the, one of the positions where it's normally males, right? Um, and the teachers say all the time, like, you know what? You're right. Like, I always see the kids gravitate towards, towards him. And even though the, he doesn't have some of these kids in his class, 
like they they gravitate towards that male figure why 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 do you think like we the children loathe for that or long for them sorry long for that um that male role model and so and that's just part of it you know that's just part of it i think um again when we talk about uh, emotional health um you know research shows again that that children develop healthier you know social skills emotional emotional wellness uh, are are just more developed healthier when when a father is involved so when you look at criminal as well criminal activity um, there's less crime rates in in communities that have more father involvement right there's uh less poverty rates and so it's linked now i don't i'm not saying that fatherhood is the answer to everything but it's a huge component to our communities when we have fathers involved yes yes and I think, you know, with all that, it really shows that there, there's almost like a reminder and a realness that, that fathers do love their children. Sometimes they may not be sure how to interact. They may not be sure how to be involved with their child um, just because of some of their history and some of the hurt and the pain that they're going through and, and how they see themselves as well. So, you know, kind of really go from there is, can you speak a little bit more just about the uh, sort of how fathers start to value themselves or, or, or see themselves um, and, and how, how that kind of impacts some of their involvement too? Right. So I, I, uh, I had time at the day reporting center for parolees, right? And these are, these are guys fresh out of prison. And understandably, you can, you can see right off the back that they discount themselves, right? I haven't been around. And, you know, I don't deserve the respect. Like, I get it. I'm going to have to earn it, but it's going to be hard. They're probably better off without me being around. And I, when I used to, when I hear, when I hear them say that, it's not them saying it. It's them echoing what they're being told. The majority of the time, they don't really feel that way. I've never met a father that does not love his children. Out of all my years working with fathers, I've never met one that never really loved his children. But I've met some that have been lost that have been lied to, um, and that have been put down, right? And they put themselves down. Again, personal barriers that we put on ourselves, mistakes that we've made, get it. However, mistakes, you don't, you can learn from those mistakes, right? Um, and so when, after having more deeper conversations, and I would, why would you, why do you think that you're better, your kids are better off without you? You know, why do you think that, that you don't deserve that chance? What makes you say that? And then they start, they start saying, well, I mean, you know, my, my wife tells me or my girlfriend tells me all the time, you know, my baby's mom always tells me that, um, you know, sometimes when they're um, teenagers and, and they're a little bit angry um, at the situation, they, they lash out and say, You're, you haven't been here. You know, why should I listen to you? And, and rightfully so, right? They're hurt. It's a lot of pain. And, you know, the families are broken, hearted about the situation and, you know, become angry. That's, you know brokenhearted and, 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 you know, is, is hurt and, and eventually, you know, becomes angry as well because he can't figure it out. And so it's really starting that meeting them where they're at. Right. Um, and another thing, I'm also a master trainer of the nurturing fathers program curriculum. And what we like to teach in that curriculum is, you know, being the father that you choose to be right. And writing those wrong, those mistakes, um, writing those wrongs, where just because you were fathered a certain way, because we learn how to father by the way we were fathered. And a lot of times if we didn't have a father, then we never really learned that blueprint, okay? And we really wanna be able to write out, number one, you have the choice, it's a choice of who, what father it is that you want to be. And a lot of times it's just looking at the little boy within, which is another part of the curriculum and the first week you look at the little boy within that little boy that you that that used to be there right and that's one thing that i always used to tell um that i always talk about as well when i speak to to staff when we see a child and we're working all in this for the children we have so much compassion so much passion so much empathy for that child and we want we want to do everything we can to get this child what he needs right and then this child grows up whether it be in the system or not and eventually we end up losing that empathy as they become teenagers or they grow out of our systems or, or they're just now becoming young adults and we just write them off right off the back. And it's like, why, why do we lose that empathy? We cannot lose that empathy because there is a little child within that person, whether it be male or female, whether it be father or mom, right? 
And so we, we really look at that within the program in regards to, um, you know, hearing the voice from the little boy within. What is it that you wish you would have heard from your father that would have made a change? What is it that you used to hear from your father that really makes you doubt yourself, right? Because I know for me, again, going back to me, I hope you don't get tired of it because I'm going to go a lot back to me now. But uh, going back for me, I used to hear a lot from my mom, like, you're going to be just like your dad, right? Or you're going to, I used to hear from my teachers because I was, I was a knucklehead at one point, believe it or not. Um, but my teachers would tell me, you know, uh, you're, you're just going to end up in jail. You're going to end up in prison. You know, you guys are all on the same road. I ended up going to continuation school for my high school years um, because of my choices, right? And so when I used to hear that, and as I became a young father, I, I used to echo that, like, man, I'm going to end up messing up because that's all I'm good at. That's all I've ever done, right? I was a screw up. I was, I was a pariah, right, in society. And I had to do a lot of self-talk. That's another thing we t that we talk about in Nurturing Fathers program is that self-talk, learning to change those negative statements that we've heard as a little boy and turn them into positive. Like, no, I do deserve to be happy, not just my kids, because at first we do this for our kids, we need to do this for ourselves, right? And so, yes, I deserve to be happy. Juan deserves to be happy. And Juan is not a screw up, right? I may have not got all my degrees and all that, but I'm not incompetent. I'm very competent, right? So a lot of this self-talk and, and, and it's really just giving myself confidence. Because I tell you what, man, when I, when I first became a father and then I ended up losing my children, my confidence was at an all time low. I was so timid. I felt, even though I wasn't like with my head down and like off to the corner, I felt like I was. Like, I felt like my shoulders were, were low, you know, and slumped, and my head was slumped. Even though I still had that, that persona on the outside, that's how I felt on the inside. I did not have no confidence. Um, but I started realizing, like, I, I have a choice, right? And that's, the, that's what we want to tell our dads is you have that choice to be the father that you choose to be. Not that somebody else told you you're going to be or somebody is telling you that you are, but that you choose to be. Yeah, yeah, that, that's really meaningful. I, I think all that's really meaningful because you, you, you then approach it from more of a, a trauma informed lens, a recovery oriented lens that, you know, it's not just what's happening for them now, like what's in the moment now, but it's like, all this was really built up from things that it's happened to them and happened um, in their life. And so, you know, approaching it from the standpoint, like you said, the boy within of, okay, there, there's something that trauma that may have happened there's now this place where you can really sort of build up those you know what choices you choose to do now that will allow you to move forward with what you want to in your life and so yeah that rebuilding process is really something that's key to that um and i think you know going into maybe what you brought in brought up in the beginning which is sort of how you're you're incorporating moms into this process as well so um can you share a little bit about maybe how how that sort of like, um, you know, maternal engagement goes into just the, you know, the activity that you're also doing with fathers as well. Right. So I think, so a lot of our trainings, right, is geared towards professionals and, and our, our community partners, all of our partners that sit at our table, right, um, with it, within the coalition. And so we encourage our, 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 um, our partners, basically, that uh, when, when you have, so it starts here. This is the that I've added to, to my toolbox, right? It's really looking at it as assuming that fathers engage. Assume. Because right now, the way we are, society and the way things are, and, and it, it's not intentionally, right? But it, it is how it is. Because we, it's warm. We, we look at a family and it's like automatically assume that's not involved. And I'll tell you why right now. Um, I have a, a testimonial that I always share in part of our father engagement trainings. And I had a staff, um, a staff member that had came up to me as a clinician. He had a, a program that he was working with a family with. And he said that he never wanted to ask about dad because he didn't want to overstep boundaries, right? He's working with mom and he never, he knows that his role, because he was a new father. He's like, I understood that my role was important. I'm going to be a good dad, but I didn't want to bring that up because I didn't want to overstep boundaries. I didn't know what I was going to open up, right? Um... I didn't know the, the situation. After the father engagement training, I realized that not only 
do I have the tools, but I have a responsibility to engage this family holistically, right? It's my responsibility. This is what I'm here for. He goes, so after the, after the training, I was, you know, I, I got some more tools and got the confidence to just, you know, go ahead and, and, and go about this, this question in just conversation, right? And he goes, and when, when I got, when I brought up the father, you know, how can we get dad involved? You know, it's really important. You know, there's a lot of research and it's great for the kids and um, he can learn these, um, these, these tools as well. Mom's like, oh yeah, he's next door. Or no, he said, uh, she said, he's upstairs. I can go get him if you want. He's like, I was working for this family for weeks. Not once did I ask about dad, not once did I bring up dad. And he's been in the house the whole time. And, and I didn't, and I didn't engage the family, you know, a, appropriately right like this is my responsibility he goes and that's kind of what we what we like to encourage is as you have moms as you're working with the family because the thing is, is that we live in a fast-paced world we have deadlines we have quotas right we're we got meeting after meeting emails that have to check up and so we're moving like this we're moving so we got one thing after another but we need to be able to slow things down because that's going to be able to speed things up if we are able to service the family as a whole, they're, they're less likely to come back, right? Um, so, or they're, 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 they're more likely to gain the tools that they need so that they can be successful as well because the whole family got the services that were in place. And so all this to say that when, when we have, when you have a mom within your program, you know, number one, assume that there's a, that dad's there. Number two, engage the family holistically with intention. With, you ha it has to be about intention. We can't just go, you know, from one family to another because we're a family servicing agency. We service mom, we service the kids, we wash our hands, move on to the next family. No, let's let's intentionally seek to engage the whole family. Let's intentionally seek to ask about, wait, what about that, right? What what other things do you think can be put in place? Or, you know, does dad need some support? Um, you know, we have programs, we have support groups, we have, um, you know, partners that we can um, send dad to as well. Uh, we have resources, things along those lines, just really engaging the family holistically. Hey, we have, you know, we're going to have an event. Make sure dad comes too. you know, even have events that are geared towards, you know, dad engaging with their children and, and having activities uh, with their kids. Sometimes they don't have that time, uh, you know, because they're always at work. And there was a, a program and they shared a video recently that I sat in and they, and they interviewed a father and the father went to it was a preschool um activity head start activity and the dad took the time off work to go to this event and had a great time with his kids and afterwards the dad was like emotionally crying he said i have never realized how much i was failing not failing but how much i was neglecting that quality time with my kids he goes because i'm always working when i get home from work i'm like i'm so tired and so you know i spent time with them watch tv he goes, but actually getting this, this quality time and doing activities, he's like, this was like one of the best days of my life. Now, it's pretty intense for him to say something like that. But I think at that moment, he realized, um, you know, how important that quality time is to his child because his child was ear to ear, big old smile, right? And so it's just things along those lines are, again, organizational barriers, you know, that we need to eliminate and really seek to engage dads. And so I, that's one, one route is really um, engaging our, our, our families, our moms, and letting them know, hey, this, you know, father involvement is important. Here's some of the research, the data. And that's kind of what we have asked our champions that sit at our table within the coalition is, you know, we, we, we're not meeting just to meet. We're really meeting to shift culture within our organizations, within our systems um, to engage moms, right? And, and encourage moms to, hey, if dad is involved, right? Or, hey, where is dad? Because again, going by assumption, right? Assuming dad is there. Um, and then you'll learn more. You'll learn whether dad's not there. And if, and if dad is there, well, most of, the, most of the times that is the case, um, then we can, you know, look at providing those services for moms as well. So another thing that we're, we're looking at doing is um, within our, our fatherhood summits, we, we, you know, we leave that open to, to, um, to moms as well. Any, any of our events, we leave it open to for moms to attend. We have a lot of moms that reach out like, hey, you know, dad's not around. Can I attend or is this only for dads? And, um, you know, we're more than open to having moms there because I get it. You know, some a lot of moms feel like they're the father figure as well. Um, I know my mom tried to play um, both roles, even though it's, it's you know, it's it was my dad's responsibility and role to fill. Um, but my mom took on, tried to take on that role. 
And so when, when moms are, are involved and attend our, 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 our events, they realize that, you know what, this is something healthy for my kids, right? Like this is something that, you know, I do need to encourage. And if dad's not around, because we know that there's a lot of guys that are just, you know, cut ties and are hard to find. So when there's a dad not involved, can we get a father figure? Can grandpa be involved? Can uncle be involved? Big brother, right? Um, even a cousin, uh, a father figure, male role model that can fill in those, um, those um, some of those example setting and um, quality time that a child longs for. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like that last part because it, it really speaks to that sort of support network. And then having that support network, as you start to expand it out, it starts to, and I think this is something um, you had brought up to me when we talked before, is just sort of it lessens, um, you know, the plate of just what one person has to handle. So if, if all of that was just on mom's plate, that's a lot. But if there, if it's sort of branched out to now having another father figure, maybe other people who are there as well, it really lessens that and gives more just capacity to be able to engage the child and capacity to be to really build relationships that are important. So I think that's really, really that cool part. Um, yeah, I know I, we're starting to get towards the, the end of our time together here. So I'd love to just kind of hear sort of any takeaways or any last words you may have um, while we still have you here. Yeah, no, I think uh, for me, number one, um, part of my takeaways from, from uh, working with our fathers and then also working with our community partners, our county agencies, is that it's going to take all of us, right? I think we, we've pretty much laid this, um, these barriers that we put up ourselves as society because what did society tell our dads early on? I know, again, I'm bringing up my own personal story, but I remember growing up on welfare and my mom, at times when she would have those visits from the social worker, she would hide her boyfriend's um, belongings because if there was a male in the house, if there's a man in the house, we would get cut off services, the support's not there, the financial aid's not there. So what are we telling dads, right? We're telling dads, hey, if you want your kids to get help, you need to go get out of here, like get out of the way, right? And we'll give mom and the kids the support. And that's just one example. Um, and even though things aren't like that now, right? We're seeing a lot of, of those services provided for fathers. Um, but even the WIC program, we, I, we're constantly having to tell our dads, hey, you know, you can go get WIC as well. Our single fathers, you know, it's not just for moms, even though it says women, infinite children, right? You can also um, benefit from, those, um, from that support and that aid. And again, so it's, it's just those uh, systemic type of barriers that we put into place. And it's going to take all of us to really make some um, changes, um, some policy changes, um, some revamping of our mission statements even, to seek and, and, and engage fathers intentionally with intention um, to, bring the, to call the fathers in. It's not about calling the fathers out, right? Because that builds confrontation, and that's not what we're trying to do. Conflict, no. We're trying to call the dads in, bring the dads back in because they, they deserve a seat at the table. And, and if we allow that seat at the table to be filled by a father or even a father figure, um, you know, our children will, 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 be, will be definitely have a, a, a better um, opportunity in life, right? Because they gain all those tools that they would gain from the other parent. And so I think for me, another thing is this change is possible. As I mentioned earlier, that's my, that's my number one, um, you know, mission and, and um, statement or, just messaging that I want to get out there. You know, I'm a, I'm a turnaround person. You know, I've done my life-changing moments. I'm talking about from going from a, not just addiction, but homelessness, right? Living, living in the middle of one of the most impoverished um, cities in our, in our country um, and, 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 I'm, and my addiction and, and the, just a, a cycle of generational curse, right? And I was able to break it. Um, change is possible, right? When you talk about the ACEs score, uh, for those of you that are aware of the ACEs score, I scored a perfect 10 on the ACE score, okay? And, and, and that scared the heck out of me because I know what, what the, what the, what's the outcome. However, there is that resiliency part, and we all play a role in that resilient part, right? We can all provide that support for a father to, to just not just become resilient, but to get connected to the pipeline of success. Yeah, I mean, everything you said there and even throughout this episode is super meaningful because it really sort of provides that motivation, that, that sort of possibility that, you know, with hope, with resiliency, like you said, there, there is 
a way to move forward with this. You know, I think with father engagement, it's so important just because it doesn't get prioritized as much um, as we would want it to. So, yeah. So, yeah, thank you so much, Juan, for, for really joining us today, for really speaking, um, you know, about your story as well as, you know, some of the uh, things you do in your role and, and how that impacts the, the community. So, thank you again. And uh, for sure, we'll, we look forward to bring you another episode of the Coaching Corner podcast, uh, the Academy podcast, brought to you by uh, the Academy of Professional Excellence. We'll see you soon. It's an honor. Thank you.